we go. I'll just un, uh, unmute Ron. Ron, you're back again. Hi. Hi, Frank. Let's say, what what is your take on um, the Vatican's eulogy on uh, Pentecost, considering <laughs> the uh, what we did prior to that? Um. My my feeling is that there remains a huge battle within the psyche of the Vatican as to whether they should and indeed whether they can reform themselves consistent with what all the prophecies say will happen. Now, the prophecies say that the papacy ends and it says that the existing system ends. And I believe that that is 100% accurate. I believe that's true. But what I saw out of the Vatican on the most important... People think Christmas is the most important uh, day of celebration for the Vatican. It's not. Some think it's Easter. It's not. Easter is a sacrifice. The most important day for the Vatican and for the satanic forces around the world is Pentecost. It's the day of illumination. It's the, what do we mean by illumination? It's Illuminati Day. That's it. Illuminati Day is Pentecost. And the message that came out from the Vatican was almost like someone copied and pasted two or three paragraphs out of the catechism, the catechumen. So that tells me that there was either uh, a last-minute pulling of what they would like to say, which is what I think happened. They got, they got uh, cold feet at the last minute. They'd written something and they got cold feet. Or um, they're in such a battle internally that they just can't manage through. But the, the non-response to me, spoke volumes. It actually, there was nothing of the typical bravado and arrogance. I mean, they, I know they said that the church was uh, was Catholic from the day one. It was, it was, as I say, it was like someone copied and pasted a section out of the catechism. It, it said nothing. And on a day of illumination, to speak a message that was thor- thoroughly unilluminating from a leading theologian spoke volumes Ron that's my my take on it yeah I read it too and I'm going these guys didn't say anything you know said nothing really yep yeah well that that just shows you that that certainly they've got something internally I mean it's a it told me that they got it they got the message and secondly that they're struggling to come up with an answer mm-hmm. um, so you know, it is all, it is, you know, and I've, I've, I've read it and there's nothing there that is coded, I have to say. I mean, I've I read a lot of their other stuff and there was very strong coded messages in it. There was nothing encoded in the eulogy of, uh, of uh, the pontiff this time around. All I would say um, is that we have a timetable and that timetable is very, very, very old and we'll stick with it. And either they reform or they don't but you know history is slipping away from them and this was another example of they missed history you know history will will judge them for what they didn't do on that day and what they were supposed to do on that day which was to acknowledge that all the dead have risen um, they didn't do so we now come to another key day before judgment day which is the day of all saints and uh, again, it'll be another nail. At the end of the day, day, these are all just simply nails in the coffin, so to speak, of the end of their system. And they are a kingdom of ideas. And the ideas that are transforming, that we're part of now, are overtaking them. And they know that. They know that. Can I bring all up right? one more subject? Yeah, you can bring up anything you like. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of a new. It's kind of a 
a new subject for me. Um, Greg uh, took that picture of what we thought was, well, it still could be Planet X, right, on Sunday, the 12th. Uh, and yep. you saw that. And then yep. two days later, I stick my cell phone up in the air and I take a picture of the sun. Yep. Well, the solar flare that was coming off the sun, that, that was not a, a, um, a lens aberration. That was impossible. That yep. solar flare was over a million miles long. It was huge. Yep. But I caught it at the right time, right? Yep. But what was interesting was behind it was the outline of a planet that was two-thirds above the sun. But it yep. was so close to the sun that um, I, I couldn't I couldn't separate it. it the, the brightness was just too much. I, I probably have to find another program, but maybe somebody on this chat can help me. I'm not a photographer, and I'm not a Photoshop kind of guy. So today, I take some more pictures of the sun about 2 o'clock. Now I have large orbs going toward the sun and away from the sun, and I'm wondering if... My camera, I mean, it's a cell phone, right? It's a tiny little lens. Right. Sure. I'm wondering if, the number one, the cell phone is actually creating the, these aberrations, or are we seeing something that they don't want anybody to talk about? Um, and then that I, leads I, I, to the... Yeah. What in the heck is going on? We have JPL tracking an object that they say is Elenin, which nobody has ever seen because yep. they, they say it's at 456 below zero, right? Right. So nobody is seeing this thing, but yet they're tracking this thing that nobody has seen. And yet we have all this activity around the sun that they don't talk about. And maybe you could shed some light on it. Okay. Well, <clears throat> if you... What, what, what is what does Hollywood, the uh, public notice system, tell us about the ruling elite? Um, when something's happening, what does Hollywood tell us the ruling elite do? Do they oh, tell they us? They always give us notice. They always give us notice. They give us notice of of uh, of doom and gloom, but but in the in the stories, what's the one thing they don't tell they they, they do with the public? They don't tell the public anything, do they? It's all. It's all to the very, very last minute. And then five minutes to midnight, they say, uh, we're all going to die and uh, good luck to you. Yeah? Yeah, we're going to go after a hidey hole and have a yeah. nice year, you know. <laughs> That's right. Have, have a nice, uh, have a nice uh, Armageddon. I think that is the prevailing, and they justify it for, you know, they say mass panic, da-da-da-da-da, all that stuff. And, and in a sense, it's true uh, because the world they've designed is a world to promote control and in that world ego reigns and ego is a child to these things ego has no rational ego's response to death is denial that's ego's response to death so e ego as a mind virus is a is a is an infant when it comes to these things so people ruled by ego uh would just go mental if you told them that the you know that the world is going to win what we've said uh, time and time again, and I think it applies. The reason I'm not dwelling on Ellen is, is, is threefold. First, in all my study, the thing that I've seen time and time again is that absolutely everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. And because I'm blessed to see the knowledge that is collecting and percolating up, and some of it called Ukadia and much of it not called Ukadia. You know, knowledge everywhere, wisdom everywhere is emerging. The veil is lifting. Uh, it takes to me that there is something happening for a reason. The second is, I know that the universe is a dream, life is a dream, and I know that the sun understands the agreement and the promise that is made through the covenant that we are maturing. And I know that has an effect. And the third is that whatever is taking place in the heavens that may be frightening the hell out of the ruling elite is happening for a reason and it is beyond my department 
And yet, if I stay true, then that's the best I can do. When we talk about visualization, Ron, you know that I'm doing some work and discussing some work with the, uh, a number of indigenous people in different parts of the world, uh, some in America, some in Australia, some elsewhere, and that part of that visualization is to help those that are connected most to the land to respond to the earth and respond to the sun. But I look, I, I think all of this is going to be a miracle. I don't think this is going to be a doom. I don't think it's going to be a disaster. I think it's going to be a miracle. And the miracle is, what's the quickest way to get rid of all the parasites in the world? <coughs> Drop some meteors on their hidey holes. Precisely. Yep. So we leave it at that. I don't wish ill on anyone, but I just know that the greatest poet in the universe is the universe. And things, the greatest laying plans of mice and men, yes? yes? Their greatest plans, you know, they hide themselves in mountains and the only meteor hit is that mountain. It's happened before, it'll happen again, they're ruled by ego, they can't help themselves, let's just focus on the visualisation of the world changing and let's, let us pray to uh, the sun and to our ancestors that whatever is supposed to happen happens and that we are given the opportunity to prove that we have grown and that this age is, as they say to the Americas, the fifth world, the end of the fourth, the beginning of the fifth. This is the end of days if we, if we follow the Abrahamic faith and that this is the new age. Let this be the time. Uh, and and we, our, our prayers and our thought, our thought is immensely powerful. If one can conceive, all can conceive. And that's something we can do in a practical way, Ron. Yep. So, yeah, good on you. Good night. Good night. I know I've missed a few uh, questions, but I'm going to wrap up now. We've come almost to the end of the, the hour. I, I know that there are some questions here about um, uh, what is one issue that you can raise in court uh, that will give you a good chance to prevail. Um, Look, it's a broad question, and, and I, I simply say that there are notes already on how to succeed at court. There's background material there. The, the single most important thing you can ever do when you go to court uh, is to be competent, to be respectful, uh, and to conduct yourself in a manner uh, of knowledge and to know your your rights and know the principles of law that's 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 a long sentence and there's a lot in it and it may not give a specific answer but really competence and virtue are really interconnected tonight we spoke of virtue but in many of the previous talk shows we've spoken of the other so maybe truth seeker Go back and have a look at some of the other uh, talk shoes and you'll see more meat to answer that question. Look, thank you all tonight. Um, really appreciate you uh, asking your questions. Really appreciate uh, you coming on to all that will listen on university.uk.info. Thank you. And as always, I look forward to sharing with you next week at the same time. And hopefully, hopefully, very soon, I will be able to share with you the published version of Cognitive Law. And I hope and trust that it will also help you in your matters, in your learning, and in you hopefully helping others as well. Thanks again, everybody, and good night. Good night.